I can't believe it. What the heck is going on here? It's totally unacceptable. Angela. Angela. Where are you? Wherever you are, you better come here right now. Or else, don't even expect to see the sunlight tomorrow morning. Cause I'm gonna punish you really really hard for this. Oh, hi Michelle. I'm here. I've just come back home. I'm having a shower. Could you just wait for me for a while? And what's that important thing you want to ask me to do? Don't expect to see the sunlight? You're making me scared, Michelle. Wait, wait, wait. What on earth are you thinking, Angela? Are you seriously kidding me right now? How can you be so utterly laid back as to even consider taking a shower before attending to your responsibilities? I mean, I swear, I've been pampering you way too much lately, and what do I get in return? A daughter-in-law who's becoming lazier and lazier with each passing day. It's like you believe that just because you're married to my son, you have this divine right to do whatever the heck you please, am I right? Ugh. You're acting like some silly, mischievous child. And oh, have you even bothered to take a glance at the dining table? No, of course not. Because guess what? There's absolutely nothing on it. Nothing, I tell you. And do you have any idea what time it is? It's a whopping eight in the evening for crying out loud. And yet, you have the audacity, the sheer audacity to think it's perfectly acceptable to waltz off and take a shower. You were supposed to be slaving away in the kitchen, preparing a scrumptious dinner for all of us by now. I mean, seriously, Angela, are you sure you're even worthy of the title daughter-in-law? Because honestly, from where I'm standing, you're nothing more than a lazy good-for-nothing couch potato. Oh, for the love of everything that's sane, Michelle. Can you please just cut me some slack? Give me a break. I've just set foot in this house after slogging through a grueling day at work. I specifically asked you to wait for me for a little while, didn't I? I mean, is it too much to ask for a little bit of understanding? Why do you have to make such a big fuss about it? You're really going overboard here, can't you see? How dare you speak to me this way? Ugh, I swear, dealing with you is nothing short of a never-ending headache. I just can't take it any longer. So please, I'm begging you right now. Just give up on messing this house and manipulating my son. Michelle, seriously, what on earth are you going on about? What did I do to deserve this intense level of animosity from you? I just can't wrap my head around it. You used to be a genuinely kind and welcoming meet from the very beginning when I came into this family. But ever since your husband's passing, you've undergone a complete transformation. It's like you've become an entirely different person. You continuously hurl insults at me, harass me relentlessly. And now you're even resorting to labeling me as a stupid, disorderly daughter-in-law. It's absolutely mind-boggling. I don't even know what to say to you right now, Michelle. Oh, look at you playing the victim card. How original. Spare me the dramatics, Angela. I've seen through your little acts long ago. It's honestly embarrassing for me to have allowed Brian to bring you into this household in the first place. I should have kicked you out of here ages ago. And ask for your question of why I feel this way, well, it's quite obvious, isn't it? You already know the answer deep down. How could you be so cunning as to steal your own mother-in-law's husband right from under her nose? 
It's a despicable betrayal, Angela. What? I've told you a million times before, Michelle. I am not your husband's mistress. Why can't you believe me? It's completely unfair to keep accusing me of something I didn't do. And just mark this. You don't have any evidence to jump to that conclusion. So just stop. You're making me feel hurt. Wait, are you blaming your own mother-in-law? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I can't believe it. How could you get the nerve to do that? Okay, fine. You want evidence? I have it right here. See this. What? What's this? Ugh, seriously? Can't you see that it's you? I mean, come on, Angela, this is undeniably your face, isn't it? I found this picture hidden under my husband's working desk. And he had the audacity to admit that he had had a lover before. But I just can't wrap my head around the fact that he still had feelings for her even after marrying me. It's absolutely mind-blowing, and you have no idea how utterly shocked and devastated I am to accept this painful truth. Michelle, please, you have to listen to me. Oh my God, this is a huge misunderstanding. I can explain everything if you just give me a chance to speak. No. I've had enough of your meaningless explanations, Angela. Your words hold no weight for me anymore. They're nothing but a pile of worthless rubbish. Who in their right mind would want to listen to a conniving fox like you? I certainly don't. Just imagining you and my husband being together is enough to get on my nerves. Okay, that's it. I've reached my limit with you. One more word and I swear I'll throw you out of this house without a second thought. Do you understand me? But... The next day... Hey, Angela. Are you up yet? It's getting pretty late and you might want to get a move on. Oh, hey, Brian. Yeah, I'm awake. Actually, I'm feeling a little under the weather today. I think I might need to take a day off and rest. Ah, got it. Well, if you're not feeling well, it's definitely important to prioritize your health. Don't worry about anything, Angela. Just focus on getting better soon. By the way, speaking of which, I've noticed that you've been seeming quite weak lately. It's a bit concerning, to be honest. Is there something going on that you haven't shared with me? You know I'm your husband, right? I genuinely want to know what's been happening and if there's anything I can do to help. Well, nothing yeah, nothing special. Not a big deal anyway. Angela, listen to me. You don't have to bear everything alone. We're a team, remember? Your well-being is important to me, and I want to be there for you. We'll figure it out together. I'll always be by your side, so don't hesitate to share your burden with me. So what's up? Well, it's about your mom. You know, she's been treating me really harshly lately. And I don't think I can take it any longer. Yesterday, she forced me to wash the dishes and do the laundry until 2 a.m. That's why I am too exhausted to handle anything today. I'm sorry. No, you don't have to apologize for anything. It's actually me who should be apologizing to you. I failed to protect you properly from my mother's harsh behavior. It's such a disappointment, and I feel like a terrible husband for not being able to shield you from all this. Oh my god, no. That's not what I meant at all. Please, just hear me out, Brian. 
you're not at fault here. In the beginning, your mother treated me so kindly. We all got along well. But after your father passed away, her attitude toward me changed, completely changed. She started viewing me as someone who was trying to ruin her once happy family. She even accused me of being your husband's secret mistress. The only evidence she has is a picture she found under his desk. It's a photo of a woman who looks just like me, but with long hair. I swear, Brian, it's not what she thinks it is. And the truth is, this is my mom. What? Are you for real, Angela? This is your mom. Like truly. Yes, it's true. My mom shared the story of her first love with me before she passed away. The love between her and your father was incredibly intense. They both felt a deep connection and were crazy about each other. Unfortunately, their parents strongly opposed their relationship. In fact, my grandparents went to extreme lengths, even moving far away, to try to put an end to their love. As a result, my mom had no choice but to break up with her husband. It was an incredibly difficult decision for her to make. After moving to a new place, she met her husband, and they eventually fell in love and got married. Oh my God. Is this for real? It's truly unbelievable, I must say. If this is the truth, then it's such a relief. It puts everything into perspective. Yes, it is the truth. But the unfortunate part is that your mom didn't believe me at all. She completely dismissed my explanation and insisted on labeling me as a stupid brat or a naughty daughter-in-law. It's frustrating because I don't know how to make her understand the reality of the situation. Absolutely, Angela. I believe in you wholeheartedly. We've been together for a significant amount of time. And I know for a fact that you're not the kind of person my mother is accusing you of being. Trust and understanding are the foundation of our relationship, and I have complete faith in your character. And there's one thing that I'm certain about, and that's the hair. Ever since I've known you, you've always had short hair. I've never seen you with long hair like the woman in that picture. It's just not your style or something you've ever done. Exactly. I'm so glad you noticed that, Brian. It's an important detail that further supports the fact that there's a misunderstanding here. My hairstyle has always been short. And I've never had long hair like the person in the photograph. It's clear evidence that I am not the woman my mother-in-law believes me to be. Absolutely. I share the same sentiment. It's crucial for us to communicate the truth to my mother and present her with the facts. By doing so, we hope to dispel her false assumptions and bring her back to the kind and understanding person she used to be. That's exactly what I'm hoping for, Brian. I believe that deep down, my mother-in-law still has that goodness within her. It's just clouded by misunderstandings and misplaced suspicions. If we can effectively communicate the truth and the impact of her accusations, there's a chance she will realize the consequences of her actions and change her perspective. It won't be an easy task. But with patience, empathy, and open communication, we can work towards restoring the harmony in our family. I strongly believe in the power of understanding and forgiveness. And I hope that by addressing this issue directly, we can pave the way for healing and reconciliation. I couldn't agree more, Angela. Patience will be key in this process. Changing someone's perspective takes time. Especially when emotions are involved. We need to approach the conversation with empathy and give my mother the space to process the information. It's essential for us to remain calm and composed. And remember, I'm with you this time. So if she does any bad things to you, 
just tell me, and I'll be there for you, okay? Okay, Brian. Thank you so much for always trusting in me. Don't mention it, darling. Well, take care. I gotta go to work now. See you this evening. Okay. Bye. Bye. More moments later. Angela. How does it feel there? Well, that's for not obeying my orders. You stupid filthy fox. You'd better go to hell and live there all your life. Michelle. It's unfair for you to treat me like this. How could you lock me in your husband's room? I can't believe it. I can't believe it. How could you be this evil and vicious? Are you really my mother-in-law? And what did you have to do this for? I'm punishing you for messing up with the happiness of my family. Is that enough to explain? What? Not again. I told you, it's not me. It's my mom. Your husband and my mom were each other's first loves. That's why the photo was under his desk. Ugh, why don't you even think for a minute? How dare you talk to your own mother-in-law like that? It's unacceptable, don't you think? Just who are you that can talk to me with that kind of voice? It seems like you just never fail in driving me crazy. Your presence here alone is enough to get on my nerves. Oh my gosh, can you even listen to yourself? It's like you're speaking a language only annoying people can understand. Seriously, Michelle, you're taking this to a whole new level of ridiculousness. I mean, have you ever seen me with your husband? Not once. I wouldn't even think about it in a million years. I treated him just like my own dad, with respect and kindness. There's absolutely no secret between us. But no, you refuse to accept the truth and instead you choose to belittle me at every turn. It's like you have a personal mission to annoy the life out of me. Ugh. Enough of your nonsense blabbering. I don't want to hear a single word you say. Just look at you with that annoying voice and irritating attitude. It's no wonder I can immediately imagine you and my husband together. Is that your grand plan? Were you scheming to seduce my husband, thinking you could take over this entire house? Ha! What a careful and calculated scheme you must have thought up. But let me tell you, it's not going to work. My husband is dead now, like gone, six feet under. There's absolutely nothing you can do about it. Oh, please. Spare me the melodrama. Your attempts to shut me down with your annoying voice are just making my ears bleed. And trust me, I have no interest in going to those lengths you're imagining. Your husband being dead doesn't change anything for me. I never had any intentions towards him, and the fact that you think I did is beyond absurd. So go ahead, keep trying to annoy me with your voice and your baseless accusations. It's not going to get you anywhere. Oh, so now you think that you could be so sensible and mature to give me advice? That's just hilarious. Really? I'm bursting out laughing right now. That's enough. You are just a stupid daughter-in-law. What could you do with me? You just don't have the right to do so. I'm still your husband's mother. So I have the full right to order you. Actually, you should see this as a golden opportunity to grow and become a much better wife. You must feel really lucky to have me here and teach you how to behave. If you were someone else's daughter-in-law, they wouldn't even bother wasting their time and effort for you like this. 
Oh yeah, so you mean that I have to thank you, right? Thank you for mistreating me? For locking me in your husband's room and not even bringing me any food for one whole day? I don't think so. I just can't believe that you could resort to this treatment to humiliate and punish me. Even when I didn't do anything wrong. Yes, of course you do. You stole my husband. Don't you think I'll let you live freely like this for the rest of your life? Oh no way, young lady. I realized your true face now, and I'll never let you keep doing your evil plans to manipulate my son one more time. Oh, so now what? What do you mean by manipulate your son? What did I do to Brian? You know it, right? Don't try act like a victim towards me. You seduced my son and then got pregnant. At that time, I was so happy as I simply thought that having a child would be perfect for the family. But it turned out that I was actually wrong all those times. It's your cunning trick to drag us down, isn't it? You tricked Brian into having a baby with you. And then when everything settled, it would be so much easier for you to take over this house and order us around. I've never thought of this even in my dreams. Ever since your husband died, it's like you became a totally different person. Just because of a photo, without any clear evidence. I don't want anything like this to happen. I just want to live like a nice daughter-in-law. And live in a peaceful life with my husband. Why do you have to make things this complicated? Making a fuss about nothing? That's not who you used to be. It's all because of you. Look what you made me do. You made me become this kind of terrible person. But it's okay, as long as I can get rid of you, then I'll resort to anything. You're so evil that I can't even recognize you anymore. How could you make such a sudden change? Well, I think that even when I talk till tomorrow, you will just choose not to believe me. But Brian will. What do you mean by that? Spit it out. Well, if you want to know that bad, then I'll tell you. I have just told everything to Brian. You may think that it will do no harm because he is away on his company trip right now, right? Well, guess what? I sent him pictures of your messages and told him about everything you did to me. Needless to say, he was absolutely taken aback. So he decided that we would move out right away. And he's on his way to come back home in a few hours. Wait, what? He said what? You have just heard me really clearly. We'll move out. I no longer have to suffer from your terrible punishments anymore. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on just a minute. Are you seriously trying to tell me that Brian actually said that? You expect me to believe you are knowing tales? Well, I'm not falling for it, Angela. You're just a master manipulator, spinning your web of lies with that grating voice of yours. I won't let you get away with it. Don't you dare scare me with your made-up stories. Hard to accept the truth, right? Well, I knew it. You will be really shocked to hear this. Your husband died, and now your son is going to leave you behind, too. That's disappointing, isn't it? But, well, that serves you just right. No, wait just a minute. I can't wrap my head around this. How can you possibly think that my son would betray me like this? He's always been such an obedient boy. Listening to my every word, standing by my side through thick and thin. 
you're trying to twist the truth with your annoying voice and your manipulative tactic. I refuse to believe a single word you say. It's absolutely impossible. Oh, Michelle, your resistance is like nails on a chalkboard. It's like you're living in a world of your own. For your annoying fantasies reign supreme. But let me tell you something. Reality is about to hit you like a ton of bricks. Just so you know, Brian is on his way back home as we speak. Yes, you heard me right. He's coming and he'll be here in no time. And you know what? I couldn't be happier about it. This place, this so-called home, has been nothing but a never-ending source of annoyance. It's like living in a perpetual state of hell. Your attitude, your constant punishments, I've had enough of it all of it. So, moving out is not just an option. It's the best choice I could ever make. This is outrageous. I won't stand for it. You're just using Brian's return as an excuse to escape from the consequences of your own annoying actions. This place is our home. And you're trying to tear it apart with your irritating voice and your incessant complaints. I refuse to let you ruin everything we've built here. Oh, Michelle, your denial is truly astounding. It's like you're wearing noise-canceling headphones, blocking out the reality of the situation. I couldn't care less about escaping consequences. I'm simply tired of living in the sea of annoyance you've created. Can't you hear it? Can't you hear the annoying echo of your own voice, constantly berating and punishing me? Oh no. This is a nightmare. If what you're saying is true, then my life is utterly doomed. I can't even fathom the thought of living without my son. He's more than just my flesh and blood. He's my whole world, my reason for existence. How could you be so heartless as to steal both my husband and my son away from me? You're a monster in human form. How dare you? Oh, please spare me your melodramatics, Michelle. I'm not stealing anything or anyone. It's you who has pushed them away with your constant overreacting and terrible behavior. Your annoying tendencies have driven them to seek solace elsewhere, away from your oppressive grip. Can you blame them? Who in their right mind would want to live with such a severe, overbearing woman like you? No. You can't treat me like this. If you two all leave, then who'll take care of me? Who will give me money when I need you the most? That's just ridiculous. I don't have a job. You are always the ones who give me money. If you leave, then I'll have no one to count on. Come on, Angela, you're not that selfish, are you? Oh yeah, Michelle, I am. Being bullied by you all these times is just enough for me to go. It's good for you too, as you don't have to see my face every single day, right? But I don't mean that Brian will go with you as well. Just go alone and don't drag my son in this. Brian told me to do this. I did not force him at all. And he even wanted to cut ties with you for crying out loud. Maybe when he comes home, he'll talk to you about it. He told me not to say a word, but sooner or later, you'll still need to know. No way. Are, are you kidding me? You guys can't be this ungrateful to me. Please, Michelle, tell him to think about it again. I'll change. I'll open the door for you. Don't tell him to leave me. It's funny to see this change in your attitude. You're afraid of losing your son like this? Well, 
I'll tell you what. We're never going back to this house. Not even once. Just wait and see what he'll do to you. It's not gonna be easy though. Then Mrs. Michelle let me out of the room and begged me hard for my forgiveness, but of course, her effort went in vain. For hours later, Brian came home with an angry face. Later on, he walked right into Mrs. Michelle's room, and they had a scorching argument. Two hours later, he angrily walked out into our room, packed our stuff, and went out of the house, leaving Mrs. Michelle standing there, shocked and depressed. Fortunately, after leaving, we could soon find out. A small apartment in the center of the city near our company. With the money we saved up, we could finally buy a house of our own. We lived happily with each other, and managed our work really well. Only five years later, we could finally have a stable high-paid job of our own, and even managed our own business. About Mrs. Michelle, she used to continuously call us to beg for money, but we refused to give her a penny. Then, she had no choice but to go out and work on her own. As I heard, she worked as a cleaner at a food store. The work was really hard, but she had to get accustomed to it and earn a really low salary each month. Karma has got her, 